She is the founder of Empowered Whole Being Foundation. The Empowered Whole Being Foundation is a safe and sacred community in support of self-realization exploration. Founded in 2001, Empowered Whole Being Foundation continues to expand self-empowerment discovery opportunities. She is an intuitive, now thought educator, core issue release counselor, spiritual transformation facilitator, inspirational speaker, published author, host of the Empowered Whole Being radio show and the EWB TV YouTube channel, and the founder of Empowered Whole Being Foundation and the Empowered Whole Being Press. She began her reawakening journey in 1987, which led her to extensively explore quantum biology and quantum physics in relation to spirituality, guided her to develop the spiritual transformation simplified. She has successfully facilitated breakthrough transformation and self-empowerment for countless clients around the world. Her mentored clients are able to quickly transcend self-sabotaging blocks, clarify what their source of true happiness is, and then bring their own best life to fruition using the spiritual transformation simplified tools and techniques. Ladies and gentlemen, Candace Stewart Findlay. Thank you, Farouk, for this opportunity to not only be interviewed by you, but to have an opportunity to talk with you and learn more about what you're doing. I've been fascinated by it, and it's an honor to have a chance to really have that connection finally. Thank you very much, Candace. Thanks a lot. Candace, in 2001, you started the Empowered Whole Being Foundation. Then you came up with a now thought educator. You are a core issue counselor. You are a spiritual transformational facilitator. You are an insp inspirational and motivational speaker. You are an author. You are a host of EWB radio show and TV show. If somebody asks you to give one answer to all this, where would you stand and who you are? Gosh, those are all things that I've done. Mm -hmm. And they're all birthed from who I am. And who I am is what we all are, mm -hmm. ultimately, is a spiritual being in a human body. Okay. And my goal and objective is to be able to facilitate for other individuals to remember that truth, mm -hmm. to empower them. That's why it's empowered whole being mm -hmm. to empower them to remember who they are. So are you, talk, are you talking about some sort of inner discovery? Absolutely. Okay. Excellent. Because it really isn't. Um, and I, this is, we all let me back up and say that we all start in a place where we're just going through life going through the motions worrying about this thing and that thing and chasing the um the carrot of oh this will make me happy that'll make me happy and never really feeling mm -hmm. happy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then it was like a switch was flipped okay and I went from a being in a research mode, what I call the research mode of mm -hmm. just creating havoc and experiences and challenges and oh my God, and, and, and I'm all alone and there's no one or I can't even trust God to help me, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And this switch flipped. And then I began to feel nudges and, and have sensations that, wait a minute, there's got to be more than just this. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This was way before I started studying quantum physics, way before. And in, then that led to the next thing, to the next thing, because when that switch flipped, I was like, oh, my God, I, I need a teacher. I need a master. I need someone to tell me what to do next. Yep. And so I quieted and I, and I expanded on that and asked for clarity, and I got so strong, no. So when you, is, quiet, when you say quiet, you're talking about meditation? Is, is that what you're talking about? It was about? before I even knew how to meditate, really. Mm -hmm. I, I ended up in 19, 
88, I think it was, mm -hmm. going to a special school for mediumship training. Okay. Because I, I came in this time around, you know, full on psychic, intuitive, and all that. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it was sort of sometimes like, especially as a young adult, like being in a room with multiple TVs on at different stations all at mm -hmm. once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lot, be overwhelming mm -hmm. and so finally I was able to go to this course yeah it was a immersion like you would you lived there for f several days and learned several things you know mm -hmm. simple things from just like bending spoons okay to actually uh -huh. doing regression work and okay. expansion work where you begin to kind of feel like what it's like to travel out of the physical body like travel into a higher sense of consciousness mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so after all of that I didn't really meditate because I didn't fully understand like I do now how mm -hmm. to do that properly mm -hmm. or, or effectively I'll put it that way mm -hmm. but I knew how to tap in through automatic writing um, you know just being quiet Mm -hmm. Automatic writing was such a great way to, you, we were taught that in mediumship training school mm -hmm. where you would write a question mm -hmm. and then just go to that still place and start writing and then all of a sudden the stuff would start downloading out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, in and that it's, it's just like a, It's just like a flow of water which keeps on coming. Yes, okay. yes, mm -hmm. yes. And when it stops, just like when I was bending this, heavy duty fork into all different weird things it felt like butter in my hands until i went wait how could i bend the spoon it's metal and mm -hmm. then it froze and when you're doing the automatic writing same thing if i go wait how can i know that and then it would stop mm -hmm. but we were trained in a way to reactivate it so through that process i got really clear there isn't a person mm -hmm. It's going to be multiple. It could be a book and one paragraph in that whole book mm -hmm. is for you in that now moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so from that time forward and continuing now, that's mm -hmm. how I do it. I just, when I expand into that higher level of consciousness, mm -hmm. I'll ask, show me what's next. Mm -hmm. And then I just let it come. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you are a now thought educator, and you just spoke about now. So what does that mean? Because that's a very new terminology for me, now thought educator. Oh, yeah, because instead of saying new thought, okay. I use the word now thought. Okay, you're talking about the persons? I'm talking about right in this now moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What are we feeling right now? What part of our body is tight? What part is relaxed? Mm -hmm. What are we feeling predom predominantly? Are mm -hmm. we in, where's our autonomic system? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it in stress mode or is it in the healing restorative mode? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where am I right now? That's being fully accountable and present. When we talk about being present, and I never use the word mindful. Mm -hmm. Because that tends to put people here, mm -hmm. and that's tertiary. That's mm -hmm. after the fact. Okay. Because the heart is first. Mm -hmm. primary, heart's the primary transmitter of electromagnetic frequency information. Mm -hmm. And the belly brain, the enteric nervous system, mm -hmm. the whole gut, yeah. that has 100 million neurons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's the primary receiver of electromagnetic frequency information mm -hmm. so by being present in the now moment I can assess am I feeling and transmitting and receiving alignment with mostly feeling bad frequencies mm -hmm. or am I aligning and feeling and therefore transmitting mostly feeling good frequencies wow. that's what I'm talking about the now thought Hmm. I, I can just take an example because I'm a very friendly guy. So if I meet someone who is very new, stranger to me, I, it takes some time for me to get involved. But I can understand this is a person whom 
with. I can, I can collaborate or have a friendship or whatever it is. But at the same time, it has been many times in my life that when I see a person, I try to get out of the person, out of that sort of zone. Automatically, it's a feeling inside me that I can't connect with this person for whatever reason it could be. How would you take that and what do you like to speak about that sort of situation? How does it happen, that sort of feeling in a person? It can be a couple of things. Mm -hmm. Because remember, we are dialoguing mm -hmm. 24 7 exactly. energetically. Exactly. Our body language and our spoken words are such a small part of what we're communicating. Absolutely. And as I mentioned before we started recording, there is such a thing in quantum physics called entanglement, mm -hmm. which equates in metaphysics to everything is everything or mm. interconnectedness. Yep. So when we meet someone mm -hmm. and we and we are in doesn't even we don't even actually have to be physically in the same room to mm -hmm. have this happen. Mm -hmm. However, we're in the same room and you walk in and you can feel the heaviness of the room. Exactly. Exactly. And what you're what you what you are experiencing is the cogn the um the um, discord mm -hmm. between the frequency alignment you may have in that present moment mm -hmm. compared to what this other person may be focusing upon, albeit unconsciously, mm -hmm. because research from uh, one of the esteemed biophysicists, Dr. Bruce Lipton, mm -hmm. he purports that ni about 95% of what we feel and through our feelings and our transmitting is unconscious. Yep. And when you think about that, that shows you right there why people can walk through life and feel like they're constantly being broadsided mm -hmm. by events, mm -hmm. caught off guard by events. Mm -hmm. It's because they don't realize what they're transmitting. Exactly. They're not conscious of it. That's why I'm a big uh, proponent of conscious creation and teach that how to do that. So you walk into the room and that person may be f unaware of the fact that they're resonating and aligning with a lot of fear, energy, unworthiness, blame, shame, guilt. They're all part of that same bandwidth. Mm -hmm. And it's a, he it's a heavier, denser vibratory rate. So it's not in harmony, just like um, hot and cold. Yep. If you're really, if you ex you're exercising, and you your body temperature's up because you've been pumping it, you know, mm -hmm. and you walk outside and maybe it's chilly out. Yeah. You can't even feel it. Exactly. Cool. You know, or or it's such a shock. Because when you walk outside, the difference in temperature is such a difference. Mm -hmm. It takes a bit of a jolt. Yeah. So it, it, that's just another way of talking about the difference between harmony and disharmony of, of vibratory rates or frequencies. Does that answer the question? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I would like to give you a scenario. Now, if you were to be called by an organization and they want you to give a coaching to the leader, leader of the organization, what what coaching would you give them? Now, because here we're talking about the leader who attracts everybody. That could be a scenario where the leader comes in into the room and we feel a distant. So what type of coaching do you give to leaders? And how, when, what is the importance of your knowledge to the leaders of today? The most important thing is whether or not they're willing to take ownership of what they're creating. Mm -hmm. Are they willing to be fully accountable? Mm-hmm. So many leaders aren't. Yeah. I have come across in my travels mm -hmm. in, in this realm of self-realization, several individuals that from the outside seem so uh, um, successful and I guess in a monetary, monetarily, yes, mm -hmm. um, and charismatic. But when you're up close and personal with them, mm -hmm. they're, they are a, like a basket case sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know what, yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. they're so riddled with their own fears and feelings of inadequacy. 
-hmm. and they're struggling to overcome them by their will. Mm -hmm. And that never works because it comes back to the quantum biology. We're energy. Mm -hmm. And you, before I really studied quantum physics and quantum biology, mm -hmm. I did that too. Mm -hmm. Positive affirmations constantly. Okay. But I was thinking these thoughts, but I was feeling the opposite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that never works. We have to be in harmony with our whole sense of self. We have to feel, if we want to feel more feelings of feeling good, mm -hmm. we got to feel good. Absolutely. We have to align with those feeling good feelings mm -hmm. and own the fact when we're not feeling good. Mm -hmm. And it's not a bad thing to not feel good. Mm -hmm. I see that as just plain out data. Mm -hmm. When I'm feeling good and some fearful thought or energy comes to my, my awareness, mm -hmm. I come back to feeling good and I ask about it. Okay. What? What did I create with that? Mm -hmm. What information from my unconscious wants to be understood and recognized? Mm -hmm. That's how we can clear out the cobwebs. Mm -hmm. wow. I see that as a natural part of the self-discovery process. Mm. Now you spoke about affirmation. And when you go for law of attraction, they, they take through affirmation. How is you... Your, your studies different from the law of attraction. What's the gap between the two or what's the difference? I, I started out with law of attraction because I, I watched The Secret like... Wow. <laughs> like that's, a, that's, that's how most of the people started with. I, me too. Yeah, I started watching The Secret, I swear to God, for every single day. Because mm -hmm. I was like, I got to break through. I want to break through. What is stopping me? Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't figure it out at that time. Okay. <laughs> but I, I watched it over and over and over. And not at that time had no clue about the quantum biological system that's built in. Because we're ultimately the most magical transmitters and receivers of electromagnetic frequency information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I didn't understand about that back then. Okay. I was trying to will myself to create, mm -hmm. but you, but again, mm -hmm. unconsciously, I was transmitting fear. Oh, you really can't do this. You're not mm -hmm. really capable. Oh, you're mm -hmm. broken. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong with you. Exactly. So, da, la, 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 la. so it wasn't until I had all these um, uh, dots connected about the quantum biological situation, you know, what's really happening as far as our energy information exchange, mm -hmm. that I was be able to finally begin to shift what I'm creating. Mm -hmm. So the law of attraction is presented as if you think about things mm -hmm. even though you're transmitting the opposite mm -hmm. if you just think about your thoughts and all of that that you'll somehow magically attract something to you exactly. but that's not how the quantum world works mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's transmission first it's feelings being transmitted first mm -hmm. the creation comes second you can say manifestation, but it's creation. Mm -hmm. Our feeling frequencies are instructing the waves of energy to form particles, to create matter and events, to coordinate on a higher level certain events based upon recreating and matching the same frequency we first transmitted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's transmission first, creation second which is why I call it the law of creation because without ownership to me the law of attraction is too passive okay. it's like it's being done to me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that I have to be good enough for it to happen but I'm not feeling good I'm mm -hmm. worrying about if I'm good enough which is judgment mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's a fear-based frequency so then I end up transmitting judgment wanting it to act 
react differently, but it's going to do the same thing. It's going to create something where, gosh, I didn't do it again. I must not be good enough. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can go in circles like that. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I understand. That's, that's great to know from you. you. You also introduce yourself as a spiritual transformational facilitator. Now, when you talk about spirituality, are you talking about religion or are you talking about something else? How do you define Oh, I know. I, uh, my terminology may have to evolve, Farouk, because I, I am such, um, I so fully embrace Mm -hmm. my expanded self as being my true identity. Mm -hmm. And when I, use, when I say spirituality, I'm talking about that expanded identity. However, you know how vocabulary and vernacular is, what, what it means to me might, may not mean the same thing to someone else. Yeah. And oftentimes people think I'm talking about Christianity or some sort of form of... of um, it could even be like a, with a guru or something like that. And it's really not about any of that. Um, I'm kind of shifting towards talking about conscious creation mm -hmm. instead, even though the title of my book is Spiritual Transformation Simplified. Because mm -hmm. when I wrote that book, mm -hmm. that was the mindset I had about seeing that we're already spiritual beings. We're not separate. The illusion of separation and the illusion of duality is just that. Mm -hmm. It only exists here in the third dimension, the physical world. Mm -hmm. There's no other plane of existence where there is this finite illusion of separateness. Mm -hmm. So, again, coming back to semantics, it may mean something to someone else, you know, differently to someone else. But I'm talking about the all-encompassing that... I'm not on the outside trying to get back into something. Mm -hmm. I'm already the in. Mm -hmm. I'm already the it. Mm -hmm. Having a human experience. Wow. So, good question. Thank you. And give me a chance to clarify. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You're awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. What type of people approach you? And what is your unique selling proposition or unique selling point? Gosh, you know, I really approach it, again, from a guidance point of view. Okay. When someone crosses my path, I mm -hmm. know there's a reason for it. Mm -hmm. That they, what I have to say, they're, they're, they may not know that they're ready to hear it, and they may not be able to take it all in. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be little bits and pieces that's going to help them take another step, another baby step closer to feeling more whole. Mm -hmm. and being able to receive and really feel the goodness of them, the beauty of who they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there are people who want to really go deep. Yeah. And I can take them there because I do this core issue release work, which is very deep work. Okay. And I also can um, work with people on a, a more um, less deep level. Mm -hmm. I won't. I'll say it that way, where they're just wanting to understand how to more consciously be aware of what they're feeling mm -hmm. and to help them reframe it mm -hmm. so that if they're not able to stay um, um, in a happy, uh, not happy is not the right word, if they're not able to maintain a positive, feeling good state of being, mm -hmm. and they have so-called negative thoughts come yeah. into their awareness mm -hmm. that they're not failing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to reframe that. I want to switch that mm -hmm. so they instead see that as an opportunity mm -hmm. to have unconscious blocking information, yeah. beliefs come to their awareness so they can see it in the light of day. And the three steps of 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 release are recognition, something hold me back into a feeling bad place. Mm -hmm. Next one is identification. Mm -hmm. a, you know, come back into a feeling good place and then go, well, what was that really about? Mm -hmm. what, what's, the, what's the unconscious belief there mm -hmm. what, that triggered that fear? Mm -hmm. And then once we look at it impersonally, which is such a big key, mm -hmm. 
impersonal observation, then we can go, wait a minute, does that still serve me? Mm -hmm. Does that really even, is that even logical? Because a lot of these blocking beliefs, when you get them out in the open, they're like, what the heck is that all about? Mm -hmm. You want to laugh because it's just like so ludicrous. Yeah. But when it's all wrapped up, tied in a neat little bow Mm -hmm. with all that fear and angst, Mm -hmm. we can't get clarity around it because all we do is react to the fear and angst. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important to learn how to shift out of that back into a feeling good place. Mm -hmm. And there's another reason why that's important. Mm -hmm. When our heart is the switch for the autonomic system. Sure. So, and we control the switch by how we feel. Yeah. So if we're feeling feel for, feel, pardon me, fearful, mm-hmm. we're going to be in the stress mode. And when we're in the stress mode, we don't have access to the prefrontal cortex at no. all. Absolutely. So if we're, if we're faced with a challenge, do we want to have access to this to find a solution? I would think so. Mm-hmm. It would be highly... Uh, recommended Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) so that's why it's so important to understand what's going on on a a quantum biological level that really boils down to frequency management Mm -hmm, frequency mm -hmm. alignment management actually Mm -hmm. if that makes sense wow no so here there's a physiology that also plays major role yes it's all about understanding Mm -hmm. i mean this this is our vehicle yeah. Our consciousness is using this vehicle. Mm-hmm. I think most people know more about their car than they knew about their body. Exactly correct. And I think it's important. I mean, you don't have to be full on a microbiologist or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I think there's certain things that are important to be aware of so that you can utilize that knowledge for your own expanded and, and successful approach. Uh, next steps, you know, so you can really engage and use all of the power that you have Mm -hmm. to create more goodness, holistic prosperity for yourself and for others. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Before we wind up, Candice, what are the three advices that you would like to give to our audience? If if someone is really ready to take that next step Mm -hmm. to really look at what's going on if they're really ready Mm -hmm. to shift their life into a direction where they feel much more empowered to make decisions that they feel comfortable with and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. The first thing is going to be to take full ownership Mm -hmm. of who you really are Mm -hmm. and to take full ownership of the fact that whatever you feel, whether you're aware of it or not, you're trans admitting that and you're creating something to come back it's like a ping back Mm -hmm. what you're experiencing in the so-called outside world is the after effect of what you first transmitted through your feelings Mm -hmm. so taking ownership and there have been times when i did some deep dives and like you know i want to figure out what am i doing unconsciously that keeps creating stumbling blocks Mm -hmm. and i created some crazy stuff that was painful i mm-hmm. had to look at it and say i own that mm-hmm. so and it's more or less cause and effect it's we cause it the effect yeah by how we transmit so mm-hmm. taking ownership number one mm-hmm. i don't care if i know at first it seems like holy cow how can i have to own all of this mess yes mm-hmm. if you want to not keep creating that yes so ownership the second thing is to being open to the possibility, to be willing to be open to the possibility Mm -hmm. that you already are more than your physical self. Absolutely. That you're something greater than that. Mm -hmm. And quantum physics completely backs that up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You had a powerful microscope and you went through the cell, the molecule, the atom, the electron, and on and on. Mm -hmm. It would just be waves of energy. Mm Mm-hmm. And that energy is what we call, you could say, source, God, collective consciousness, whatever. But it is that expanded self. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
And then the third thing after all of that is to embrace that the journey mm. is not a straight line. Mm. Absolutely. There are bumps up and down. Well, there's a natural progression because we in our human consciousness, mm -hmm. because we are in the third dimension and time space is involved mm -hmm. here, the, the physical awareness and human consciousness does need time. Mm -hmm. As you shift from one level of awareness to another, it, mm -hmm. time to assimilate. Exactly. And I would encourage everyone on that last and final tip is to let go of the judgment. Mm -hmm. I've heard, I can't even tell you how many times people have said to me, I thought I'd be further along than this by now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As if there's some kind of a time clock. And there's not. Everybody has their own journey and their own unfolding process. Exactly. So correct. I'm going to encourage to honor that. Mm hmm and uh, just trust that as you need it, what you need will come, especially if you're practicing the energetic alignment, ownership, and all of those first two things. Then you're going to get the right information. I guarantee it. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, Candice.